Yes. Okay. Start recording. Okay. So uh, during the semester, we started with Maxwell's equation. Yeah, yeah. also the students in the class because we have also some uh, others here write down also the postulates of the electron structures and write down also the postulates of magnetic statics <laughs> So, can you also write down the postulates of medical statics? Uh, so these Maxwell's equations, what they do, what they describe for us, they do describe how they depend as a function of time and space, and uh, depends on dependence on time. It is shown. So the dependence on time, it, uh, it is shown on this side of the equation, and uh, not dependence on time, that was a wrong statement. The, the way how it will be changing as a function of time, it is somehow described here, and this is how it will change with respect to time. And uh, so this is the rate of change, the, the spatial spatia, the spatial uh, spatia here, we spell it spatia, the spatial changes of these intensities, because these are intensities, these are equal to the rate of change of the fluxes. Okay, so these are flux, and this can be equal to the mu h over d time. This is equal to the rate of change of permittivity times electric field with respect to time, and this is equal to the permeability times the rate of change of this intensity as a function of time, and similarly, this follows like this. So, what we see here, we see that uh, we have two different equations of what order. What order are these differential equations? They are first order differential equations, that's true. And these are two first order differential equations, but they are, uh, they are like this, okay? So, these two differential equations, they are coupled. And uh, we prefer to decouple this, these two equations. And the decoupling, it has a cost, there's a price to pay for this, because uh, that's true. So this 
once we try to decouple them, what we get, we get that this is equal to the, this is all, this is equal to 1 over the propagation speed squared, the rate of change of the electric field with respect to time squared. So this will be the wave equation, which is a second order uh, differential equation that we get from these two expressions. So now this is uh, decoupled. Now this decoupling uh, is good. Now the magnetic field intensity also is going to change in a similar way. And this would be equal to one over up squared times the second order of the electric field. Sorry, this would be magnetic field. I made a mistake. So this is like this. So these are the wave equation. Now, this is an equation, we need to solve it. How should the expressions that we get from here, how should it look like? Or on what it should depend on? And by the way, we can also repeat again to all of us that uh, it is often useful to use a phasor notation. And the phasor notation, it, uh, we can represent this one as mu, j omega times h, and here we can write this one as uh, permittivity, j omega times e, okay, because we, we can use this one as an operator where the derivative with respect to time, it is going to be equal to, uh, to that statement. The reason is that the solution of the electric field this would depend on, let's write this one as R and T, where R is the, we did this in the last time, but let's, move, let's do this fast. So the R, this will depend on uh, some normal component times E0 times uh, E to the power minus JKR times E to the power J omega T. Okay, this is, this is uh, it. So it looks like this information, which can be described by the, this derivative, uh, this is somehow, it's shown in this space propagator, and this is the time propagator. In a similar way, also the electric magnetic field intensity, it will change, it will depend like this. This will be equal to, Okay, so what we try to show here in this part is just that the direction of the orientation of the magnetic field intensity, it will be found by multiplying, by taking the cross product between the K vector and the electric field vector. And actually this E divided by the magnitude of E, this is simply a unit vector along the direction of E, right? This is how uh, we can represent this one. And in principle, uh, at least in, uh, in a vacuum, we are going to assume that the K vector, the magnetic field and the electric field, they will look like this, okay? There is a triplet and they are all mutually uh, orthogonal with respect to each other. We are going to see that there are also cases where or when the electric field is going to have a non-zero projection along the K. So we might observe also this, but this happens mostly in uh, waveguides. But at this moment, we just want to, going to assume that the projections of the electric field onto the K vector is equal to zero. And uh, what does the K vector represent? The, let's say, the direction of a wave, this is equivalent to the direction of K. Okay, so this is what we are uh, really talking about. And uh, when you say here K dot R, uh, this vector k dot r, this will be simply. So, how how can you describe a point in three-dimensional space in the most general sense? How in Cartesian coordinate system? 
Yeah, oh, good enough. Purchase one. X. Purchase. Okay, so let's assume we have a point P here, which is X, Y, Z, right? That's good. And, uh, but whenever we write down a vector, we have to associate also the unit vectors along these directions, right? What are these unit vectors? A, X, A, Y. So right? A, X, A, Y, A, Z. That means that the R vector is equal to X, A, X, plus Y, A, Y, plus Z, A, Z, right? So this is the R. So if this is the R, then we need to calculate what is K dot R. But let's assume for a moment that K is equal to what? Uh, let's assume k it is ky it, it is propagating along the y axis and uh, if k is equal to ky what do we get for kr that is uh, uh, an important question so if k is equal to k times ay then the k dot r this is going to be equal to, you can help me here, so what is k dot r? K dot r? So this dot product, this will be zero. Ay with az, it gets also zero, right? So this will be ky, okay? So often, this can be, let's assume, at this specific case, this will be ky. And uh, uh, let's think for a moment. Uh, yeah, this is going to be equal to ky in a similar way, it will go like this. And uh, uh, yeah, now another important uh, element here is but let's, let's do this one by working on an example. Let's assume that we have a case that uh, we have a frequency which is somewhat like 400. Uh, Kilohertz. This is a very small frequency, actually. I mean, normally, even when we communicate, we go at least like a few hundred of megahertz. But let's do a different example, and let's see what we are going to uh, to obtain. Uh, and then, let's assume that the electric field is equal to uh, AZ times 17 times e to the power minus k uh, y with a j e to the power j omega t okay so let this be the electric field now what can we learn about this uh, this field here is that let's have a look uh, first of all we can ask what is the propagation What is the propagation of this wave? Try to think about the Plus y or minus y? Plus. This would be plus y. So the propagation direction, this is equal to plus a y. Okay. But asking this question, it is equivalent to writing this one. K is equal to k times plus a y. Right? Because the, the direction of the propagation, that's why the k vector is called the propagation. Also, it is now this is the polarization. What is the polarization of this wave? The polarization of a wave it is in fact equivalent to reporting the direction of the electric field. By convention, we select the direction of the E field. As a, as a polarization. So what is the polarization of this wave here? It's along the z-axis, that's true, so it's, it's az. So the polarization is equal to az. And uh, this one is equivalent to reporting that e is equal to e times az. This is uh, good. Now, what else can we learn from here? Let's use this part of the board. Uh, the first thing is that we can even try to write this equation better. We don't know omega. What is omega here? That's true. This is 2 pi f, and this is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, which is 400, times kilohertz, 
which is 10 to the power 3, and this omega is going to be equal to 2 pi, this is 8 pi times 10 to the power 5, yes. right? 10 to the power 5, the unit here is radian per watt, uh, radian per second. And then from here, we can also try to find the k vector. So what is the k vector in this case? How can we uh, determine this? Actually, we don't know lambda yet. Lambda is equal to the propagation speed divided by the frequency. And this propagation speed, we are assuming that we are, we are having propagation in, uh, in free space. So this is going to be C divided by F. The speed of light is equal to what? Such was the that's true. So this is equal to uh, 400 kilohertz. This is uh, 10 to the power of 5. So 3 divided by 4, we get uh, 0 0.75. 0 0.75 times 10 to the power of 3. What is the unit? This is meters. Then the k. It will be equal to 2 pi divided by 7.5 times 10 to the power 2, and uh, this will be equal to 2 pi to p in charge, this is Bristat, the niche. It's approximately 10 to the power minus 2. And the unit of this one, what is the unit of, of k? Or this is better called meter inverse. Okay. Okay, we found the, the K. That's good. And the, the next stage would be, in fact, trying to determine what is the mag uh, magnetic field intensity. To find the magnetic field intensity, what do we need to do? So at this stage, we can use the first order differential equations, which relate the electric field with the magnetic field. And uh, let's have a look. What was the curl of E? The curl of E, this is equal to minus J omega H. Is there anything else? Let me think. So this was the derivative of the... The mu m. So we need the mu because this was equal to the rate of change of B with respect to time. And B, it's a flux. Flux is equal to mu times H. So the mu is a constant, then we get the j omega, then h. So apparently we have missed uh, one mu. So let's include the uh, mu here. So this is one of the Maxwell's equation in a phasor notation. Then let's try to determine what is the curl of E. To find the curl of E, we uh, we have here AX, AY, AZ, derivative with respect to X, derivative with respect to Y, derivative with respect to Z, and then uh, the rest will be, here we have 0, 0. The only component which is different from 0, it is AZ, and this is going to be a 17, e to the power minus JKY, minus JKY, and uh, in here, this will be, uh, let's try to see where we're going to see some, uh, some non-zero terms. By the way, the AX, what is AX? AX is going to be the derivative of this expression with respect to Y, which will be equal to minus JK times 17 e to the power minus JKY minus zero, because this is minus the derivative of zero with respect to z. We don't need to write that one, but we can also do this minus b over z, maybe, of the zero, but this is clearly zero, minus a y times, uh, when we find the a y, what are we going to consider? Derivative with respect to x of the Yes, 
But this is zero, right? Because we don't see an x here which is explicit. We don't have an x, so this is zero. This is also zero. So this is like zero. And uh, and then we have also plus az times. Plus z plus another zero, right? Okay. So we find that. So this is equal to the curl of the electric field that the uh, curl of electric field is equal to ax minus jk times 17 e to the power minus jk y. And at the same time, this is equal to what? It's equal to this other side of the identity. This is minus j omega mu minus j omega mu. Sorry, over here, omega mu times h. So it looks like what was unknown to us, this was unknown to us. We need to find this h. So all we do, we divide both sides of the equation by j omega mu. And uh, so this minus, minus j minus j, we cancel out each other. So we can say that h it, uh, will be equal to, and apparently the direction of h is equal to ax. And uh, J is gone, this is K divided by omega divided by mu. Anything else? This is 17. And uh, yes, e to the power minus J K Y. Okay, that's good. And now at this uh, stage, we can also, so this is it actually, but we found the H in phase notation, so we don't have the time dependency. So maybe this is better to write it like this. This is H as a function of y alone. Okay, this is not as a function of time. And here I can rewrite this one. This is E, which is a function of y and time. This is, we call this one, this is called the inst that's correct, instantaneous instantaneous expression. This is the phase rotation. And uh, here we can also write down some relevant values. What is k? Let's have a look at the k. k it is equal to 2 pi over 7.5. This is 2 pi divided by 7.5 uh, times 10 to the power 2. This is k. And then omega, we have to divide by omega. Uh, what is omega? 1 divided by 2 pi, the frequency it was 400 kilohertz. Uh, this is k divided by omega. And yes, mu is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7. Okay, and then we can notice here, this is 2 pi and 2 pi, they cancel out, but then so far we have just written this, this, this expression. Uh, let's write here at the top, this is 17 times e to the power minus j k y. Then at this, uh, at this point, this will be equal to, let's also remove this section here. We should have the other the other side. Uh, oh, oh. This is uh, 10 to the power 2, 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power minus 7, that is true. And then what we have is that uh, this is equal to, this will be equal to AX, oh, by the way, this is AX. Exactly. Of topic is 7.5 times 4, this is 30. 7.5 times this 4 is 30. 30 times 4 pi, we get here 125. 125. Okay, so it looks like in this expression, this would be equal to Ax times 17, which is the magnitude of the electric field, divided by 125, you are correct, you predicted this one, that is good. 
uh, e to the power of j k y, and this is h y. So this number that we find here, it looks like there is a relationship between the magnitude of the magnetic field intensity with the electric field intensity. And this one, this is h is equal to e divided by eta. And this eta, this has units of, so we know the unit of electric field, right? It's volt per meter. And the unit of the impedance, this is ohm. Okay? So this is ohm. And then you might, uh, you might think, what is the unit volt per meter per ohm? Something what is in per ohm to show the new per meter? Chelsea? And per meter, exactly. So take us what per meter, the voltage per meter, the bit of per meter. Okay. Super, you can see the never problem. Which one does you insist that it's a very numeric? What's you insist that there's some order of magnitude? And the post quantum magnetic operator, the one towards coming to the base, and the back to our system. Okay, so this this quantity that we see here in vacuum, apparently this is E divided by 125, and this eta, this is uh, we call this one impedance. And this impedance it can also be described as mu divided by the permittivity, and often we may uh, let's think if this is the true uh, or the correct unit mu it's equal to which one do you think it's, it's correct is it epsilon divided by mu or divided by... so mu it is something like 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 and primitivity is 8.85 times 10 to the power what but this is mu over the permittivity, and it looks like this will be 10 to the power minus 12, 10 to the power minus 7, so this will come higher. So it's a value which is larger than 100, right? But you don't this side. And it's just having for a moment, which means it will get here. But don't get new permittivity, new permittivity, you see permeability. Okay, so okay, so it looks like uh, this will be our uh, expression. This is good. So now, what uh, what do we understand from here? What we see from here is that uh, we observe uh, a relationship between the E and the H and the, the electric field. It's going to look like this. Now, magnetic field, sorry, here, here. So, magnetic field H in black and the uh, electric field in red, for whenever we are in vacuum, it looks like <laughs> they are in phase with respect to each other. Now, this phase, let's not forget, this is a full wavelength, okay? This is the, in, in metric measurements. At the same time, this full wavelength is also equal to 2 pi. Okay, so that's how, after we have a full wavelength, it's all to be here. Because these expressions, they are, they are harmonic. So after 2 pi, this cosine dependency, it repeats itself, right? So this lambda, it is also equivalent with different units. This is 2 pi. But uh, what we can also say from now is that this value that we see here, this happens when, whenever it is vacuum, which is a non-conductive region. What we may see very soon in our uh, in this course is that uh, in some cases, whenever uh, the medium it has some non-zero uh, conductivity, the Maxwell's equations that we are using they will be modified slightly. And more precisely, the Maxwell equation that will be modified will be this one. So we know that the current of H, which means that the space derivative of this intensity, it should be equal to the time derivative of the flux, but the respective flux, which means that the does. So on the other side, we should have the electric field components. This is Chicago. Come, 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 right. Come right now. 
So the, the curl of H, this would be equal to uh, plus the derivative of the D with respect to time. So, but the moment that we have some non-zero conductivity in the system, if the medium is not vacuum anymore, we know that this is not the only part of the Maxwell's equation, right? We have another component, which is here plus J. So this is the induced uh, current density. But if we have a free current density, we're going to have also this J, which means that these equations might look a little differently whenever we have this uh, condition. So the trick is that whenever this sigma is uh, different from zero, and uh, whenever sigma is different from zero, we are going to have So whenever sigma, is, whenever sigma is different from zero, we're going to have two conditions. One is uh, when sigma is much smaller than one, almost negligible, but not zero. So that means that this will simply go into sim uh, to reformulate some, not reformulate, uh, simplify some of our expressions. But the other case is when the, we have a very good conductor. So this is a very good conductor. This is a conductor, but a, a poor one. Now. Why did we talk about this one? It, the reason is that uh, whenever we will have some conductivity in the system, this impedance, this is going to be a complex number. If this is a complex number, uh, in, whenever we do this division, the complex expression here, it will appear somewhat like this. This will be the magnitude of theta times e to the power j times theta. Let's write it this way. Okay. So if we, if we consider some theta in here, then the dependency of H, but this is uh, whenever there is some conductivity in the system, whenever we are not dealing with vacuum, then we may observe that the, the magnetic field intensity, let me use a different uh, magnitude just to make it visible. Oh, it should not come here. Everything will be shifted like this. So everywhere, we're going to notice some shift in the uh, in phase, in the phase, which will be some theta. Okay, this will be theta. This will be also a shift notice here, also a shift notice here. Similarly, we see a shift in here. So the whole wave will be shifted, but what this would mean is that if we have a photon which is traveling along some direction, the electric field intensity would have the, mag the maximum magnitude at some point in time, but the magnetic field intensity uh, will not have its maximum yet. So let's assume the wave is coming toward you. So this is maximum. The magnetic field, it will not be maximum then the electric field will start to decrease, and then the magnetic field will approach the maximum delta. When does this happen? Whenever this is different from zero, whenever the, this quantity, the impedance, it becomes a complex number. Actually, uh, we already know from very early in our education that impedance, it, has, it, it is not only uh, a real number, it can also be a complex number because if we have in a circuit only resistances, we produce only real values of ohms. But if we have an inductor or a capacitor, then we are going to have a, a delay in the response of the system. Okay, so, and this is reflected in the expression, which can be written like this. So, whenever we do, uh, so whenever we try to calculate the curve which is potential divided by the impedance. So this is how we got the impedance, right? So we have a system, we apply potential difference at an oscillatory function, and then we try, we, we construct a, 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 a circuit, and with this circuit, we try to measure the current, and we notice that this sinusoidal wave of the input potential, we can put it on, in an oscilloscope, and we can see the wave forms, right? Which is maximum minimum. At the same time, these two uh, electrodes, which are doing the measurements, they're going also to measure the current, but what we often notice is that 
uh, the maximum of the current, it will not be at the same time with the voltage. Okay, so this is because the system has some complex value of uh, impedance. So it is equivalent as if the system has some resistance and also some inductance. This happens also for uh, for uh, biological systems. So if you put the two electrodes into a tissue, human tissue, of course you don't do it on a, in vivo to get some material, there is always uh, a complex value because human tissue, water, liquids that we have, they, are, they have uh, some small level of connectivity. Now, do we have any questions? Are you pushing the over? 